Welcome to tutorial three of Xcode in Swift 2.0. In tutorial two, we created an app in which we took two numbers, entered them into a text field, and added them together. So let's say we have the number one and the number five. We add them together and we get six. But what if we want to subtract them or multiply them? Or what if we want to take the sine of an angle or square or cube or cube root? This tutorial is going to follow up on the previous tutorial and show all of the different mathematical operations or at least the common mathematical operations that are used. So a quick brief overview of what we did last time. We created two text fields that we named my text field one and my text field two. These were outlets. We created a label called my label one. Then we created a button method. The button method is an action and everything in here was the button uh, action. So what does this say? We created a new variable called first value. First value is a double, meaning a number that has accuracy to 15 digits. And we said that that double is going to be my text field one. Well, my text field one is whatever the user entered into that box. Now, the exclamation point is letting us, well, letting Swift unwrap what this value is to find out what, what's in there. So this first value is whatever the user entered. Second value is whatever the user entered here. We put a little check in here to make sure that the person actually entered a number and didn't leave it blank. And then we said, as long as they entered numbers, let the output value, a new variable, equal a number with accuracy to 15 decimal places of first value, the user's entered value here, plus the user's entered value here. And then our output, my label one, is going to be equal to output value. So what if we want to subtract two numbers? It's as simple as making a minus sign. To multiply, asterisk. To divide, slash. So you could actually make a little calculator out of this. But what happens if we want to square a number? Well, to square a number, we would just multiply first value by itself. So we could say first value times first value. So this isn't the greatest way to square things, but it will certainly work. There's a more useful way, raising something to a power. To square numbers, just to raise that power to two. So how do you do that? Well, again, we're going to start with a double. And we are going to say power, which is just abbreviated POW. And then we're going to enter a, enter a double, whatever that number is. So we could put 3, comma, 2. And that would square the number 3. But we don't want to square the number 3. We want to square whatever the user used in the first, uh, whatever the user entered. OK. So what are we going to put in here? We're going to enter first value unwrapped. So this is now going to produce an output value equal to the first value raised to the second power. What if we want to cube it? 3, raise it to the fourth power, 4. What if we want to take a number and square root it? There is a shortcut for that. I think the easiest thing to do is to raise it to the half power, to cube root it, raise it to the one third power. OK, um, the shortcut for squaring a number, or I'm sorry, square rooting a number, is just to, instead of put POW, put SQRT for square root. And that will take the square root of that, uh, whatever the user put in for first value. OK, sine, cosine, and tangent. This gets more complicated. If the user is going to enter the angle in degrees, 
Xcode is going to calculate that in radians. So we need to convert from radians to degrees. So let's say we want to take the sine of an angle. Sine of whatever the person entered. Well, the person is entering something in degrees, let's say 30 degrees. But we need to convert that to radians. And the way to convert from radians to degrees is to multiply by pi and then divide by 180. So the way that we're going to do this is say the double for sine is going to be in this order m underscore pi, which is the shorthand for uh, 3.14 pi, um, times the first value, and then we're going to close parentheses because we've got an order of operations that has to be followed, divided by 180. Close our brackets. Oh, we need one more, one more parentheses to make that correct. Okay, so that is going to convert the person's angle in degrees into radians and then take the sine of it. What if we want to do cosine? It's cosine. If we want to do tangent, then it's just tan, T-A-N. Okay, what if we want to do the inverse of sine? or the inverse of cosine. That's going to be arc sine, or arc tangent. Uh, let's do arc sine. So that's going to be A S I N, A sine. And now we're doing the reverse in this case. So now we're converting from degrees into radians. So to do that, we're going to, oh, I said it backwards. We're converting from, we're converting from radians to degrees. So we're going to take the first value A sine, parentheses, first value, unwrapped, close parentheses, times 180, and then we're going to divide that by m underscore pi. And that's it. So if you, I must have a myth, missing parentheses here. Yes, right here. Okay. That should clear and clean up. All right. So uh, to do the inverse tangent, it's going to be a tan. To do the inverse um, cosine, it's going to be a cosine. So that's it. Thanks for watching. In the next tutorial, we will use random, the random function, to make a little simple guessing game. Thanks for watching.